What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo and today I have a passerby battle um, against a guy using a mono ghost type team. I kind of had a team that I just kind of threw together and this was actually a pretty interesting battle, much more so than I expected. Um, I was testing out a team with Mega Dionce, especially in Sandstorm. It's tremendously bulky even without investment. This is a Calm Mind Dionce with uh, Psy Shock, Earth Power, and Moon Blast. And since I Mega Evolved, of course, the Swagger gets bounced back. I don't think he was expecting me to Mega Evolve, maybe just expecting me to set up um, an entry hazard there. But that means I'm able to KO him without any issues, and he brings in Gengar, and I'm able to take out the Gengar immediately too, just because I guess he wasn't expecting me to have the Psy Shock option. Uh, I didn't want to risk failing to KO the Aegis Slash, of course, I don't think I would KO the Aegis Slash even with Earth Power being super effective um, in shield form. And Hippowdon actually takes the Flash Cannon a little bit better than I expected it to. I can definitely take two of those. Now he's probably just going to go to um, his shield form here, which he does. Good time to just whirlwind him away. I also could have set up Stealth Rocks, but I really just didn't want to deal with him. Um, honestly, I'm playing King Shield shenanigans and that type of thing. Uh, he gets whirlwinded out into Chandelure, and I expected Chandelure to maybe just go straight for the fire or ghost type attack, but I didn't think those could KO me either, uh, and so I just decided to set up my Stealth Rocks. I should have whirlwinded again because he does go out into his Jealous and burn me. Um, it would have been nice to force him back on into something that he didn't want to deal with necessarily. But that's okay, even though Hippowdon is burned, it can still have the, the utility of just being a physical walk and probably stop the Golurk from doing a lot. Granted, I can't do a lot in return. Um, and so for that reason, since Hippowdon set up the rocks, it's time for Hippowdon to take a rest. I, I let it get knocked out by Hydro Pump in exchange for being able to bring in my Feraligator uh, freshly. Now, unfortunately for me, my Crunch gets disabled by the Cursed Body, and Crunch is a great move against this guy's team, uh, just because all of his Pokemon are Ghost, of course. Um, I guess he wasn't expecting Aqua Jet. This is my uh, Adamant for Alligator, as opposed to the uh, Jolly one that carries Swords Dance. Um, I mean, as opposed to the Jolly one that carries Dragon Dance, excuse me. And so expecting him to come out in King's Shield, I just go straight for um, Swords Dance. And that actually does a great amount of damage, even with him in defensive mode. And my Cursed Body wears off, so that means I have access to Crunch again. And of course, he just Slash is pretty slow, so he's not going to be able to do anything to me beforehand. Uh, interestingly, Ice Punch with the Sheer Force and the Life Orb boost, that's way stronger than the super effective Aqua Jet. So we're just going to go ahead and go for that and clean out that battle. Now this is actually a High Dragon header, so in this next match, you see that my Passerby opponent has an Uber's team. Plus Pikachu, that's Bell Pikachu. Um, just I was just looking for ways to test out my team, and sure, why not throw it up against some Ubers? That's a good way to test out an OU team. Uh, now I started off with Hippowdon. I figured he'd start with his Deoxys, and that's a good way to break a Sash just for free. Uh, Psycho Boost does not KO me, which I am very, very happy to see. I'm able to get up my Stealth Rocks, and if he is relying on a special attack to do anything to me, he... Well, he might struggle to do so now that he has the minus two special attack drop. Now, expecting him to go for Ice Beam or maybe another Psycho Boost or on the off chance of physical move, I switch on to Jirachi. Um, and that works out just because he goes for another Psycho Boost, which I quad resist. And he has a special attack drop. And so now, this is a Scarf Jirachi, so I'll, I'm in a position where I can just U turn out. I don't really have to predict anything. And he decides to stay in, so I'm not really sure what he was trying to do right there. But getting rid of Deoxys that early in the match is always a good thing. Um, I can't think of too many situations where you wouldn't want to KO a Deoxys attack form. It's basically throwing around little miniature nukes on your team. Anyways though, uh, I go out into my Deoxy on the U-turn and he takes the opportunity to go on into his Primal Groudon. This is a bit unfortunate as I don't have a lot of things I want to switch in here. I can switch in my Hippowdon but the weather won't even change. And uh, also I just have to deal with Solar Beam or possible fire type attacks. Not not great to deal with there. Now I did think that Diancy could take a hit from Groudon, but I just severely overestimated Diancy and I underestimated Primal Groudon. So now we're gonna go on into Hippowdon hoping that he doesn't have any special moves, but he does indeed have Solar Beam. So that's super unfortunate as I just get blasted by that and Hippowdon goes down as well. Um, 
And so I'm not actually sure what to do at this point. I go out into Breloom hoping that me being a jolly max speed set will allow me to outspeed him, and it actually does. Um, that's probably an adamant, or since it's carrying solar beam, maybe uh, a more a minus speed nature or something like that. Either way though, I get the opportunity to try out the old school Breloom. That's right, the, the sub toxic heal focus punching Breloom from way back from when Breloom was first released. Um, and Breloom is actually going to be able to two hit KO Primal Groudon with just the stretchiest of stretchy focus punch. Uh, I'm very impressed with that damage output. And so uh, he actually does end up waking up and going for a fire blast just to break my sub. I think that was a little bit risky because if he had missed that fire blast, then I would have had a free substitute against whatever he wanted to bring in next. But that means I'm able to KO Primal Groudon quite simply, actually. I was very impressed with that Breloom. And someone actually wanted me to use the um, set that I'm using on Breloom. So shout out to that person for wanting me to use, that, to use that set. I'll find your name in a minute here. Uh, but I didn't have a lot to switch into Reshiram. Uh, so Breloom's going to go down here. I knew I could probably take a hit with Feraligatr, but I wanted to bring it in fresh so that I could go for a Swords Dance or something like that. Um, he actually ends up switching on into Pikachu right here. Not sure why, maybe just for Death Water. Because uh, after a Swords Dance, Aqua Jet will be able to KO Pikachu um, with a Life Orb boost as well. I'm just hoping that I don't get par paralyzed by static at that point, mainly. So Pikachu, I'm sorry you're wearing a really cute bonnet, but it doesn't really help on the defensive end. Now, Kyurem Black comes in at this point, and I figured I outsped it. I didn't know if I could KO with an Ice Punch, though, and I just barely miss out on that KO, just ever so slightly. But fortunately for me, he must not have max attack investment, and it's probably the specially based Kyurem Black, because he doesn't KO me with his uh, Fusion Bolt. So that works out great. I'm able to keep my Feraligatr for a little bit longer, just because I am using uh, moves that have secondary effects, so I don't have to deal with a Life Orb recoil. Now, I did want to save my Feraligatr for the Reshiram. Uh, I figured I, I probably outsped it, just because Reshiram is what it is. But at the same time, I also didn't think that Mega Rayquaza would go for any type of ground move. I figured he'd go for a Dragon or probably Dragon Ascent move. But he actually ends up going for Dragon Pulse, so now I get to bring in Jirachi for free. And I know that I'll speed because I have the Choice Scarf, and we're going to hit him with an Ice Punch. Not going to do as much as I thought it would. Um, and he just, he apparently doesn't have any uh, fire coverage, which Rayquaza often carries, because he goes for Dragon Ascent. But man, that does a large grip of damage to my Jirachi. Granted, this is max speed, max attack, max, uh, max attack Jirachi. I can't talk. It's like a Mad Max cluster bomb in my mouth right now. Anyways, though. I am able to KO Mega Rayquaza with Jirachi, which is just not something I expected to be able to do. Um, I am stuck using Ice Punch though. That kind of sucks. Uh, I really need Feraligatr at full health to take on Reshiram. And as you recall, Feraligatr only has like 20 HP left. So I go out into Thunderous hoping to take a move and then paralyze Reshiram back. I do take the Fusion Flare. I didn't expect to see that. I thought I'd see Blue Flare for sure and just get knocked out. But hey, I'll certainly take that opportunity. Uh, I do see a few mixed Reshiram when I play Ubers, but typically they run, um, uh, they don't run Fusion Flare. They run, um, I don't know, I, I guess, I, I can't even remember the name, I'm blanking on the name. The fire type move where you get a plus one to your speed when you use it, that move. They typically run that if they're gonna run a physical fire move. Uh, but this gives me an opportunity to go for healing with, with Jirachi and then I'm going to bring in my Feraligatr. It's going to get all of its HP back thanks to Jirachi's Sacrifice. And I know I can live any one hit from it because if it goes for stab fire type moves, they won't knock me out. If it goes for anything um, like Dragon type, Feraligatr has natural bulk and I'll be able to deal with it that way. And fortunately I paralyzed it with Thunderous and so I was able to just outspeed it in the, in the first place. So that was actually a pretty interesting match. It did not go the way that I expected it to, but definitely a good way to test out a team. Hope you guys enjoyed this, uh, this wireless header that I like to call them, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye bye now.